In this video, I just want to look at a very simple convolutional neural network which only has one single layer and one single kernel of size 15 by 15. No bias, no activation, just 225 parameters in that 15 by 15 kernel, which I'm showing here. And as I'm speaking, I am randomly reinitializing that kernel just to show what happens when that kernel is convolved with an input image here on the left hand side and it's run through the convolutional neural network just consisting of that single kernel to deliver the output here. And what happens in the training process for the CNN is that this output is compared to the target. So we have an input and a target output in the training data pair. Um, this output of the CNN is compared to the target using a mean square error loss function. And according to that loss function, uh, the optimizer then seeks to update the convolution kernel, which is a 15 by 15 kernel. So uh, in this present situation that I'm showing here, the input already matches the target. And so therefore the learned kernel just needs to eventually become a delta function. And that's what we've been seeing as I've been speaking is that that randomly initialized kernel slowly but surely becomes a delta function, just a single pixel in the middle, which means that ultimately each one of these pixels um, with a particular amplitude is just um, directly mapped to the same pixel amplitude in the output image. Okay, so what we can do now is increase the level of noise in the input image. And what we begin to see is that learned kernel now broadens in order to smooth, do a neighborhood averaging for each one of these pixel values to deliver a smoothed output image. Um, and these kernel values, of course, are learned by seeking to minimize the discrepancy between the output and the target. Now, for a simple 15 by 15 kernel, there's only so much that can be done, as we see here, but it's automatically learned the right smoothing kernel. So uh, for a simple linear shift invariant mapping, which is what we're looking, here, looking at here, or rather a linear shift equivariant mapping, I could say. OK, let me just increase the noise still further. And we begin to now observe the uh, limits of that 15 by 15 kernel. And if I keep going to very extreme levels of noise, where we've just basically got a collection of point inputs here, we can very clearly see now what a convolution is doing. Each uh, pixel in the input image is merely replaced by the kernel in the output image. OK, and so this is a clear linear shift equivariant or linear shift invariant, as some people say, uh, mapping, which is what convolution is doing. And so again, we can just see each of those points mapping to um, a kernel in the output. OK, so let's uh, get the, um, the image back by uh, reducing the noise level again. And so no surprise, the kernel is now sharpening as less and less uh, denoising is necessary. What we can also do is uh, blur the input image. And so now what's going to happen to the kernel? Let me just increase the learning rate a little bit just to speed up what it's doing. Um, what's happening now is that uh, we're getting a peak in the middle and negatives around the outside in order to sharpen this input image. And so we can see the output image now slowly but surely is becoming a sharpened version of that input image. The core date here, for example, is now much clearer in the output. But again, with such a simple 15 by 15 kernel, there's only so much that can be done here. And we're beginning to hit, in, hit instabilities here in the optimization. This is the Adam optimizer, which is um, seeking to reduce the mean square error uh, loss function here. Um, I could also just quickly finish here in this um, simple video just by going to a much larger kernel. Um, let me reduce the learning rate a little bit there. Um, so this larger kernel is um, now 63 by 63. And so that has more scope really for beginning to learn um, basically the mapping from the input to the uh, target output. And so we'd expect if I left this uh, larger kernel to uh, train for longer, we should get a slightly better result than with the mere 15 by 15 kernel. Anyway, I hope this um, video has been uh, useful. Maybe I'll just finish with a different uh, input image. What if we put a point source in here? Then if I increase the learning rate um, on this kernel, look at what we get. We just basically reproduce um, that region, okay, um, of size 63 by 63 
in the target. So in other words, the point source convolved with that delivers um, the target um, just in that receptive field of a 63 by 63 kernel. In fact, that might be instructive. Just to quickly finish here, if I change uh, the image, for example, to a different phantom, and now this point source is getting mapped to that target phantom, and we can see that um, slowly but surely the kernel is being retrained to now uh, deliver the Shep Logan phantom in the output. And again, if I want to speed this up, just increase the learning rate there. And just to prove a point here, could do a point to point mapping, could do a point to noise mapping. And so the kernel would now need to show up noise in the output image. And so that's effectively what we're seeing here. It looks like it's taking quite a while to remove those uh, boundaries from the Shep Logan Phantom, but now it's finally beginning to learn the necessary kernel. Um, and again, we can um, return to that MR slice and we can see quickly that point source convolved with the kernel is delivering the necessary output. 